we believe through this podcast that we can convey the understanding and the, the knowledge from these experts in all these fields to allow them to collaborate and be a stronger partner with us to fight global terrorism. North Carolina Congressman Robert Pittenger joins us. He's chairman of the Congressional Task Force on Terrorism. The Honorable Robert Pittenger, Mr. Congressman, welcome to the program. Uh, it was the first major rewrite of this bill in over a decade, and frankly, it came through the House Financial Services Committee. My colleague, Robert Pittenger of North Carolina, was the real leader on it. Congressman, nice to have you here. You returned from a national security trip to the Middle East. Tell us more about your work there, sir. Hello, Robert Pittenger here. Thank you for joining us today for another podcast. We're still in Asuncion, Paraguay for our fora. We've had a tremendous meeting today. I think uh, we've seen a real turn in the page, we really hope, in this tribal area, uh, Paraguay, Argentina, and Brazil. But with me right now, I have a very special person who spent over a decade just in this region. Joseph Humeyer is the president of the Center for Free, Secure Society. Remarkable individual, very knowledgeable. He knows this region as well as anybody. Joseph, thanks for being with us today. Give us your take on where we are, different than maybe what's happened in the years past. We've got new leadership, presidents in Paraguay and in Brazil. Of course, we already have in Argentina. Correct. What difference can that make? What do you see that perhaps we can turn the corner as this tribal area and uh, South America has been the just the own flux of transport of drugs yeah. and, uh, you know, tobacco, all types of illicit finance that come out of this region. Terrorism. And, and, well, to fund terrorism yeah. throughout the world. And so uh, that's really the key is getting, of course, our interest to get to the, the core of this yeah. is to break off their money. And so much of it just comes from right at this region. Absolutely. So where are we today and what are your thoughts? So I think first, I think it's good that everybody understands that the largest Islamic terrorist attack on the Western Hemisphere prior to 9-11 happened in, near the tribal area in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Mm -hmm. The AMI attack of 1994, which mm -hmm. killed 85 people, and then the attack on the Israeli embassy two years before that, mm -hmm. collectively killing 140 people, that was the, Latin America's 9-11. Mm -hmm. And the financing and the logistical preparation of that attack happened in the tribal area. Mm -hmm. That's documented, that's been proven. It hasn't been, there hasn't been convictions because the prosecutor is dead. So it's been a, one of those historic and tragic cases. And that, criminal justice reform needs to take place as well. In the I, 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 there's all kinds of reforms, criminal justice reform, mm -hmm. legislative reform, anti-terrorism reform. But what we've learned throughout the years, now that's going back more than 20, almost 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, after 9-11, the United States took a lot more uh, efforts uh, globally to uh, fight back against uh, terrorism, but also the terror finance, and they started to pay attention to the tribal area. Mm -hmm. That lasted about six or seven years, and they issued some sanctions, and then it kind of went away as we got more involved in the Middle East. I think now what you're seeing is you're seeing a revival. A revival of focus, not just on the tri-border area, but all the what they call illicit trans-regional networks that are operating throughout the world and have certain hubs. One of those hubs is very much the tri-border area. It never went away. It's still been there. And the thing that you have to know is, when in order to fight networks, you have to develop networks. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the forum is so important because uh, Congressman Pittenger, when you were wor working as a representative of North Carolina. Uh, obviously serving the constituents of North Carolina, you're also serving the constituents of the world because you were created, you do this parliamentary intelligence security forum, you're establishing a network of lawmakers, of legislators that were moving, uh, advancing and trying to stay on the cutting edge of all these threats and, and technology to be able to make sure that the laws are adequate enough to deal with uh, exactly. the, the threats that are happening. So I think what we're seeing here in, in, at the forum today is you're seeing uh, the will, the political will being established among three governments uh, and, and other governments as well that are here, but pr pr principally the Paraguayan government, the Brazilian government, and the Argentine government, who are starting to strengthen their own network to be able to combat against the, the threats that are exist in the tribal area. You were involved with us on our first two fora that yeah. we had in Buenos Aires, and uh, through the leadership of Mariano Federici, yeah. who is a great friend of both of ours, uh, you came to those. Uh, tell me the outcomes that you felt occurred as a result of the collaboration that was established, the accountability, uh, the information that was transferred on, uh, the uniqueness of these fora yeah. and what they can do as we continue throughout the world. So we I, have a lot of interest in every part of the world to do this. And Absolutely. I'd like to know 
uh, what outcomes you've seen thus far and what you hope to see in the future. So that's, that's the thing. I think, you know, I just feel honored to be a part of this because I think when we started, when, when I first joined the first forum, I, I believe in 2016, mm -hmm. and it was in Argentina, Buenos Aires, I thought, you know, okay, I'm attending another conference, mm -hmm. speak at another conference. I do that all the time. I'm in a think tank. However, uh, when I saw the, fin the participation Department of Treasury, uh, at that same conference, there was an MOU signed between the Financial mm -hmm. Intelligence Unit of Argentina exactly. and uh, FinCEN, which is the Financial Intelligence Unit of the United States. Uh, I believe that agreement brought together through the platform that was provided by the forum created the framework to eventually take down some bad actors. Mm -hmm. uh, last year, in, in July of last year, the Argentine government, particularly the Financial Intelligence Unit of Argentina, under the leadership of Mariana Federici, for the first time in the history of that country, mm -hmm. issued sanctions against Hezbollah. It's remarkable. And, and like I just mentioned in the earlier part of the podcast, they got attacked by Hezbollah. That's that right. that was they got attacked twice by Hezbollah. Took twenty years to figure it out. And well, I think they knew it. They just didn't. It took them twenty years to figure out what to do. And then they, they finally have the willingness to do it. Exactly. They have the will. And, and and I think part of that is President Macri felt that the United States cares about this. That's right. I have a friend. I have a partner. Because nobody wants to fight Hezbollah and Iran by themselves. No. I mean, that's a very powerful enemy if you're going to mm. pick a fight. But if you know you have friends, if you know you have allies, and we're going to fight on this together, yes, we're sir. in this fight together. Yes, and I believe at that forum in 2016 was when the, the, the MOU was signed. Uh, two years later, we took down one of their top uh, terror financiers, which is Assad Ahmad Barakat. He's now sitting in, in, right. in, in, a, in, a, in a Brazilian prison. And I think that action, while well, obviously there's a lot of other variables that came, went into it, the conversation started at the forum. So I, I'm pretty sure today there's conversations taking place right now in the sidelines of, the, of, of, of that conference room that are talking about other bad guys mm -hmm. that are operating in this area and how do we deal with that. And, and, and I think that's... That's the beauty of this forum. I think that makes it separate from other forums, or other conferences that I go to, which really are just talk. You know, you, you have a good conversation, make some networking, but this one's action oriented. You've got to get past the ethereal yeah. to get into how do you establish your outcomes and then how do you go execute. Yeah. And uh, one thing that I've really pushed for, as you know, at this forum is the passage of this big legislative passage, the package that they have here in Paraguay mm -hmm. that's really going to set the standard and give them the scope and the tools that they need to be transformational inside this country and take them from really uh, being more passive yeah. to being a very proactive country in this whole fight. Yeah, absolutely. No, I mean, one of the things I want to see, and this is one of the things you know, I, I participated in, in several of your forums, and I've said the same message in different iterations, which is it doesn't make any sense to me that we don't speak the same language on anti-terrorism. Mm. It makes any, doesn't make any sense to me that the United States would call Paraguay and say on one day, we we'll say, do you have any Islamist terror networks in your country? Mm -hmm. And the Paraguayan government said, no, we don't have any of those. Mm -hmm. And then they say, wait, you know, I heard this tribe board everything. Let me call back. Do you have Hezbollah in your country? Oh yeah, we have Hezbollah. That's right. Well, I just asked you about. I said, oh, is Hezbollah an Islamist terror network? Yeah. We thought Hezbollah was a contraband or a counterfeiting mm -hmm. or, a, or a money laundering outfit. Um, the fact that the fact that we don't define these organizations, these threat networks, and not just Hezbollah, Al Qaeda, sure. Islamic State, we don't define these legally in the same uh, frameworks. It creates miscommunication, and that mis miscommunication creates legal loopholes that's being exploited by our enemies. So that's one of the messages. And I think I've had some conversations here at the forum with certain government officials that are talking about moving in that direction, creating designation lists within Absolutely. their countries that would, you know, not mirror, but that would be compatible with our foreign terrorist organization uh, list that's managed well, by the I think part of the legislative package is trying to move in that direction. Absolutely, well. yeah. Well, you're terrific. I thank you so much for joining us again. You've been at a number of our fora around the world. You're always invited. Yeah. Your expertise is really important. I really appreciate your your faithful commitment to do the right thing always, and it's just great to be a partner with you. No, it's likewise, and I've been honored to be a part of this, and I think I wish you all the luck and count on me in the future for You're a good man. Performance. We've got a good man here, Joseph Humeyer, Center for Free S Secure Society. Thank you all for joining us again. This is going to be an important mission we're going to be on, and come with us all around the world as we work with legislators and smart people like Joseph, who are experts in this area, as we work together to collaborate together to defeat Global Jihad. Thank you so much.